Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 20-year-old female who has history of visual disturbance, and they ordered an MRI of the brain, and we're going to look at the eyes and brain to see if there's any abnormality. And so before we even begin looking, we think, what would cause um, visual disturbance in such a young person? And one thing is multiple sclerosis. So we're going to look at the brain for MS, and also we're going to look at the course of the optic nerves. So this is the right eyeball. You can see the little dark thing in front here. That's the lens right there. And off the back, we see the optic nerve coming back. That'll come back here, and it'll join with the optic nerve on the left side coming across here. And it'll, they'll come together about here called the optic chiasm, and then they'll branch back apart. And the optic nerve on the right looks normal. I do not see the evidence of demyelinating plaque. So no evidence of uh, MS affecting the optic nerves to cause that. We have a few other sequences here I'll show you that uh, do show the optic nerves as well. This is the left eyeball. Sometimes patients can have problems with the eyeballs. They can be abnormal in contour. One can be deformed. Sometimes they will one will be larger than the other or have abnormal out poaching in the back. We can see problems sometimes with the retina, which is back here where the optic nerve comes off. But uh, the wall looks great. There's no abnormality in the left retina. It looks nice and smooth and normal. Same in the right side here. The optic nerves look normal. So, so far we're coming up empty. Also, patients can have problems with the, uh, the extraocular muscles. These dark areas here kind of look like the optic nerve. These are the muscles. They have a medial rectus muscle here, lateral rectus muscle. They attach to the eyes and they make the eyeballs move, um, medial or lateral or to the right or left. And they sometimes can be inflamed. Sometimes you can have masses or pseudo masses in the orbits here that can cause visual disturbance. But the extraocular muscles, these muscles here, are normal in size. There's no thickening or inflammation of those. There's no orbital mass. Inflammation, the optic nerves look very good so far. So, so far we're coming up empty. Now we're going to look at the brain in profile now. There's one other entity called pseudotumor cerebri, an entity where patients have elevated intracranial pressure. That can cause visual disturbance. And that usually has, um, in the later stages, fluid around the optic nerves. The optic nerve sheath can distend. We see an extra little band of fluid around this, but it, there is no distension of the optic nerve sheaths. So there's no evidence here of pseudotumor cerebri. Also, that can cause flattening of the pituitary gland. The increased pressure pushes down in that, and we saw no evidence of that, which I'll show you later. So no evidence of that. Sometimes patients can have what we call Chiari malformations, where the cerebellar tonsils here. This is a nose. There's a cerebellum in back. Sometimes the cerebellar tonsil can go far below this line, which is the base of the brain, uh, base of the uh, cranial vault. And when this goes down low here abnormally, it can push on the brain stem and cause flow dynamics that are abnormal within the fluid, the brain, and that can cause symptoms. And we call that a Chiari malformation, and sometimes it can lead to just nonspecific uh, headaches and other problems, maybe visual disturbance as well. But this patient does not have abnormal position, so we're striking out there. Now we're going to look at the orbits again on this coronal view. This view, we see the right orbit. We see all the optic nerves. Here's the superior, inferior, medial, and lateral rectus muscles, superior oblique muscle. And right in the middle, that dot is the optic nerve. And again, there's no abnormal signal. There's no evidence of... Um, optic neuritis or demyelination, no distension of the nerve roots, so it looks good. This is a little retention cyst in the maxillary sinus, which is of uh, probably of no clinical significance, so no big deal. This is a view where we can see the pituitary gland, and it's not flattened or low. When the fluid has high pressure in the brain, pseudotumor cerebri, the pituitary tissues will be flattened and compressed, pushed down. Pituitary gland can sometimes look very small. This patient does not have that. And this is a view called a flare sequence, and it shows the brain in high detail. And if a patient has multiple sclerosis, they have little white specks throughout this dark area in the middle. It's called the cerebral white matter. On the periphery is the gray matter, and everything looks nice and normal. I do not see any evidence of um, demyelinating plaque, so no evidence of MS within the brain or the optic nerves. So we're running out of things. One more thing, though, sometimes can happen is uh, the pituitary glands sometimes push um, on the optic chiasm. So we're going to look at the pituitary gland again. On this view here, we can see the pituitary gland is 
this round ball. It's not getting pushed down. The optic chiasm is this dark band. This is where the optic nerves come together. They join right together before they branch back apart, this horizontal band. And if we window this a little bit differently, we see, wait a minute, this is the pituitary gland. There's the carotid artery here, carotid artery here, and that optic chiasm here where the nerves, the optic nerves come together. We see a little bit of gray tissue. This should be this white fluid, like fluid elsewhere in the brain, but there's a little gray area here that's not normal. It looks like it comes off the pituitary gland and touches the optic chiasm here. So we're going to look at another view to see, is that real? It's kind of hard to see on this view, but MRI has multiple views so we can troubleshoot. So this is the view we saw earlier, looking at the cerebellum, but now we're going to zoom this up. And on this view, things stand out a lot better. This is the pituitary gland. It sits in a little cup here called the cella tersica. Usually it's a round gland, sometimes it's very small, but in this patient, it's not round and it's a little bit bigger than we would expect. So this is normal part, there's another little piece of it right here. This is abnormal, this is a, um, the area we saw in the other view that's going upwards and touching this optic chiasm. So this would explain visual disturbance, a pituitary lesion going up, pushing here. Now we're going to find another view here. This has got a flare view. I put some arrows on the abnormality. Now in this view, it really stands out. This is the normal pituitary gland. This is the area above it. And you can see on the other one, it's kind of hard to see, but in this one, it just really jumps out. There's a pituitary tumor. It's less than a centimeter, so it's probably a pituitary microadenoma. Uh, there could be other uh, things. And this goes up and pushes on the optic chiasm, which I'll show on another view. So here we go. This is region of the aptic chiasm here, pituitary gland is down here. Part of this line is the pituitary stalk. You can see this aptic chiasm as we go forward. You can see the pituitary tumor is this part, pokes up like a little mountain there. Maybe the arrow is pointing to it. And you can see this is the aptic chiasm on the right. Here's on the left and this goes right up into it, elevates, maybe mildly compresses it. And again, it shows up very well on this flare view, but not quite as well on these other views, which is interesting. So this is a pituitary lesion, again, maybe a microadenoma that pushes on the optic chiasm, and this is what is causing her visual disturbance.